Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 27th, 2023. Well, we had quite a push yesterday in the market, um, kind of buoyed by some good or, um, earnings numbers, but those economic numbers really point to the likelihood that the Fed will continue to push forward in their rate increases because uh, they really came in with the economy showing too much heat. And um, I was really surprised to see the market push on through with numbers like that. But what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at these charts and see if we can figure out how we want to approach the market for today. Now unfortunately here in the diamonds we, we did have a nice bullish day. We pushed up, we broke those three days of kind of that wide range choppy consolidation. That was positive on the day but what you can see is we're just pushing right back up here into the top side of that wedge and running into some additional resistance levels in the chart here on the diamonds now on the technical front this is okay the, the, we're, we're in good shape here because we're back above that 50-day moving average and we're trying to utilize that moving average squeeze to the upside but unfortunately we are also very stretched out here um, on our index as we have really pushed um, this rally um, pretty hard and that we are reaching these overbought conditions in the market. And then unfortunately yesterday as we rallied, you'll notice over here that we did all of that rally on some very light volume. So a little bit of concern, we might be running um, into a little bit of resistance here soon in the chart. But that doesn't mean we can't remain positive here for Friday. Let's take a look. If the bulls were to find inspiration today, and I think there's every possibility that that could be the case being a Friday and um, wanting to just maintain this bullish market into the weekend, um, then we're going to look for some of these resistance levels. As you can see across here, this is a pretty darn big resistance level here in the Dow chart. It runs all the way across this um, this chart here. So if we can find that bullishness and pop that level, then what I would say we would might push up in here into that area right there. Now that's going to be a pretty big move and we're going to need, and you can see there's a lot of resistance right there. We're going to need um, a pretty good move to make that happen. It certainly is possible depending on how we react to today's data. So keep an eye on that. Now if the bears find inspiration here. Well, we've created a little bit of price support, you know, with those little resistance highs right there, um, or those support highs that we kept pushing and trying to break through. So we may have a little bit of support right in there. And if we push down a little bit lower, you can see all this price support in this price action here, right across this area and across this area, quite a good price support in there. That would be where I would expect if those bears were to come in and, and engage. I do think we're very extended here in the short term. So if the bears were to come in, we might see a pretty sizable push to the downside. But I honestly think that's probably going to be next week, um, but we'll see. Let's take a look at our SPY. Now SPY really pushed up here. And there, there's that good news that I was talking about. We broke through for the first time since all the way back here at the beginning of 2022, we broke through for the first time up above that bear trend. Now the question is, and, and by the way, we've done that with some really big spurts of energy here to the upside. Unfortunately, notice that we did yesterday's move a little bit of, um, a light volume in here on that move and if you take a look you, you kind of have to wonder is this going to be maybe a hammer pattern that's holding the price support 
or is this going to be a hanging man pattern that's suggesting a top is coming in um, on that candle so watch that carefully here uh, with that low volume I think there is a little bit of a question there now if we can continue to push on through notice that we've got some resistance levels up here to be paying attention to that we have rejected um, once before so watch this area right here there's a fairly significant price resistance level right there we've got all of this price data in here right through this area here right there and these two tops that would suggest that we may run into a little bit of price um, resistance right right in that area and if the bears were to come in today if they find inspiration then maybe a push back down and unfortunately that would be a push back down below that breakout and that could raise a little bit of question mark here uh, for the market a little bit of uncertainty if that were to occur so watch for that possibility if those bears engage today and if they were to push even further than that i think the next level is down here where we would be kind of testing the bottom side of that wedging pattern here in the chart now for me to get bullish in a chart after um, a year of downtrending a bear activity in here um, then for me to really show some confidence here for the spot and it may be coming soon we'll see is we need to get that breakout occurring and we need to prove to hold it as support when that occurs then I'm gonna be all bullish spy um, still have that big question mark that we can pop out and then reverse and fail so watch that close and then if we take a look at our QQQ very similar situation in here in the QQQ and a big stretch to the upside yesterday in the NASDAQ. And as you can see, this actually had reasonable volume here yesterday on that push. But once again, we have that question mark in here. Is this going to be the hammer pattern holding support off of the bear trend break? Or is it going to be more of a hanging man pattern as we push back up here toward these resistance highs in the chart? Kind of a question there on that. So watch that carefully. Now, when we look at the QQQ, as you can see, if we continue to push to the upside, you can see we're testing these price resistance levels right across here in the chart. And if I back up that chart, there's quite a few. A uh, few points in here that we're testing along that price action move there if we can push on through above that well, I think maybe this test up here this was that gap up on that CPI number that we rejected really quickly and you'll also notice that we've got some resistance levels across there to be thinking about and that it translates all the way over here um, into 2021 some of those resistance levels so we'll want to keep an eye on that and the same thing is true here in QQQ for me to get bullish on the Q's at this point I don't want to chase this stretch into resistance. That's one of the last things I want to do. Um, as a matter of fact, I kind of see this as more of a profit-taking uh, Friday than anything else. If um, this were to rest and pull back and hold a higher low above that downtrend, then I'm all bullish on the QQQ. But I think there's still that question mark here on the NASDAQ whether or not um, uh, we're going to hold this up here. We can break out. But if we can't hold it as support, then we run into um, that, that selling that comes in that can be kind of heavy. Now, if those bears find inspiration today, well, then I would look for a retest of these support levels right in here. If they push back down, look for a little price support right in that area. And if that were to fail, then I think we move um, even lower here back into that wedging pattern. And that would really create some questions here moving forward. So watch that closely. And one of the reasons that might occur is because we're a little bit overbought. N uh, notice how this is just really stretched out um, in that upside move. Uh, maybe just a little bit overconfident here. Um, then if we take a look at our um, IWM, Russell has been holding up really well. And you know, Russell, uh, the IWM index has for a long, long time served as kind of a leading indicator for the market. It is the largest index out there, so that gives it that, that potential to do that. Now, you'll notice here in IWM, we broke that long-term bear trend in the market and we held it as price support. 
So I've got to be bullish here on the IWM, but we still run that risk. Notice we have this big area of price resistance right in here, and it's a, it is a substantial area of price resistance where we have tested and tested and tested, trying to break through, and we continue to get these rejections across this area here. So there still is that little tiny question mark here on IWM. But if this were to rest or just consolidate, um, and hold a higher low in here, um, then I think IWM is holding up and showing bullishness. Um, it could also pop out of here and hold that up in here, and then I would be all bullish IWM if that can hold, so watch that close. Now, um, let's take a look at our VIX. This is something that has been really remarkable to me and continues to be a little bit on the perplexing side for me with all of the bad economic data that we have received um, here in the market. Um, we have no fear whatsoever um, in the market and we continue to um, pull this back. And I really am beginning to worry that we might be um, just little complacent here in in the market be, with those economic um, indicators out there and layoffs starting to pick up they just haven't started hitting the jobless claims numbers yet that we may be working into a little bit of complacency because i do personally believe the consumers are very stressed um, right now and um, our manufacturing and pmi numbers show us that because they're not out doing the spending that they would normally be doing. A little bit of worry going on there. So I think our market may be getting a little bit complacent, but that said, the bulls are in control. And if we take a look across here, we've got resistance levels. Even if the bears were to take over and push up, we've got quite a few areas of resistance that we're gonna need to break if they're going to take over here in the market. So watch those areas closely. If we do get those bears, we'll watch those areas up here and that's my, where we might get those higher lows created in the index and then we continue to push on down so watch those carefully now if we take a look at our t2122 now our t2122 is that indicator that is telling uh, me that we are at any point in time ready for um, substantial sell-off and unfortunately what we've been seeing here in this market is these multi 100 point moves moves um, in the Dow, really dangerous price action moves for a lot of the retail traders out there. And when I push up or when I see T2122 pushing up into this region, and by the way, it never fails, it, it never fails. We can linger up here for a period of time, but there's never been a time when we have pushed up into this area that we didn't get a pullback or a rest in the market. So when we start reaching up into these levels, that's when I start wanting to take profits or to back off on the long trading and maybe even think about picking up some hedges or some short positions for the pullback. There's no sign in the price action of the index charts that suggests that yet, but you can see we're very elevated here. And what that tells me is even if we get good positive data out there, we just may not have the opportunity to move up very much. Um, um, we have, I've seen it before, where we've pegged this right at 100. Um, so we do have a little tiny bit of upside opportunity here on T2122, but you can see that's opened up a very big opportunity for selling to the downside. And remember, the selling doesn't necessarily mean we collapse in the market. What it means is we may just rest in the market. We may pull back. We may go through a consolidation of some kind, and that relieves that pressure here that we've been seeing on the upside move. So watch that close. Now, if we take a look at our T2108, T2108 had a little bit of the same here yesterday. We rested maybe a little bit, but I want you to notice that we're pressing into an area here. If I draw this line, I've been talking about this the last few days, draw this line across here, you can see all these peaks. Now remember, this goes all the way back into 2017. So it's actually a very rare occurrence when we can push out 
of the, these areas, we've got to have super, super bullishness in the market. And we've seen it recently where we popped up here really strong, we got overextended and then bang, we had a really difficult pullback in the market. So as we continue to stretch up here, just that warning that this is also very extended. This is the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average. So 75% um, of the stocks above the 40 day moving average is a rather rare thing. And the fact that we're doing that with all of this uncertainty about recession and things like that, um, it kind of shows us that um, severe extension that we're in right now and that possibility that a pullback could occur at any time. Now, if we take a look at our T2107, which is the percentage of stocks holding above their 200 day moving average, we're also seeing that severe um, extension here. And if we pull this back, you can see there is a lot of price resistance here in the chart. And we may be just, and, and not that this is um, ultimately bearish, I'm not suggesting that, just suggesting that we probably need a rest or a pullback. So my suggestion would be if you're very long stocks, um, it might be a wise idea to be thinking about taking um, the, some of those profits. I'm not saying taking all those profits, but take some profits off the table just in case we get that reversal and at a bare or at a bare minimum, hedge those trades with um, some covered call positions or something like that to hedge uh, yourself for that potential pullback that could occur. And I'm not saying that it could be severe, but I do think the possibility is that it could be severe because of our economic data and the fact that the Fed is likely going to continue to raise rates. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now T2101 has been a little bit problematic here because our volume has been so sporadic. But if you take a look at T21, it is also hooked to the other side, which is suggesting the upside momentum has begin, begun to fade. So we'll want to watch that carefully if that upside momentum is starting to fade. Again, we start looking for that potential rest or pullback in the market. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar does have a few things that we want to be paying attention to. Um, as you can see here today, one of the F Fed's favorite numbers here is the personal income um, core PCE. Now, consensus is expecting that core PCE to come down. And I, I think inflation is definitely coming down. But as you heard from like Jamie Diamond and stuff, there's, there's areas of the market, you know, namely consumer things like food and services and things like that. Those are staying very, very elevated in prices. And it's being a little bit on the sticky side. So remember that core PCE number is the Fed's favorite number to be paying attention to. We need to see that coming down pretty dramatically. If it does, then I think the market will respond bullishly today. And if it, if it happens to disappoint, well, that could be the catalyst for a little bit of selling or maybe that substantial pullback here in the market. I don't know where that's going to come in, but I do think inflation overall is coming down. Um, we do have one factor that is a little bit concerning when it comes to inflation, and that's seeing those oil prices going back up. And if those oil prices go back up, remember that um, that's one of the major calculations uh, for um, uh, inflation, uh, one of those major features in inflation. And if those oil prices um, started getting folded into this new number, we could actually see that holding steady or maybe um, even even ticking up. There might be that possibility there. Now, if we take a look, we've got after that, we've got consumer sentiment and we've got the pending home sales that certainly have that possibility of moving the market. They might be add-on numbers, so if we get a bullish number here and they come in a little bit positive, then they might add on to that bullishness and that kind of thing. But I think overall the market wants to stay positive here into the end of the week, um, and I would be surprised if there is, unless we have some really bad data, 
it, that there is that real major push to the downside because the institutions just want to bang out another positive week here in the market. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar for today. Now our earnings calendar is a little bit lighter today. We get a little bit of a break, but we will have some uh, notables here this morning to pay attention to, and they're all going to be um, reports in the morning. First off, I'm going to um, mention AXP. We have um, some of these credit card companies reporting AXP popping up higher here this morning, and that's important. We need to see those consumers out there spending, um, and it looks like um, American Express is popping that downtrend here to the downside. And last night we had a Visa, or after the bell, we had a Visa report, not nearly as much love coming into Visa. And just the day before, or the morning before, we had MasterCard and not nearly as much love coming into MasterCard either. So suggesting that those consumers, well, may not be as happy as we would like them to see. Um, then we're going to see um, a report from BAH. Keep an eye on BAH. Um, trying to push up here and hold on to this longer term trend to the upside coming into some price resistance. Uh, Charter Communications will be reporting today. Looks like we got a little pop and drop going in at Charter Communications today, um, testing this big long downtrend, whether or not they're gonna be able to break through there and hold. So watch that one close. CVX, uh, we heard from CVX, um, they're going to do the, the massive um, share buyback um, coming up here and also raising their dividend and CVX will be reporting today. Um, we're pressing um, all-time highs here in CVX, so watch that close. And then we're going to get a little defensive sector uh, type stock out there um, to uh, uh, be watching, and that would be um, Colgate Palmolive. It's been moving in a downtrend, as a matter of fact, setting up in a potential short pattern here. So watch that carefully as that reports today. Um, LYB is on that list for reporting. Boy, I tell you, one of the things that I'm seeing so much right now that I think is very, very dangerous and it really shows the high speculation in this market is that there are so many people willing to buy a stock heading right into the uncertainty of that earnings report dangerous, dangerous um, trading in it. And it's one of those things that I think makes guys like Warren Buffett say, we've turned the market into a gambling parlor. And um, uh, it really has become more of a casino feel here, particularly in the options market recently with the wild speculation that's going on. Be very, very careful as we um, approach these earnings. Um, if you're already in the trade and already in a profit, that's a different story. But if you're speculating on that earnings event, it's a good way to get your head handed to you. So be careful here on these trades. Um, so LYB gonna report today and um, shot up yesterday in anticipation of that earnings report. And then we have WT, that's the last one I have on the list today for those notables. So watch that carefully. Then let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button leave that brief comment share the video out there on your social media feed that helps the channel to continue to grow and i would truly appreciate um, that kind of help channel continues to grow it has slowed down here but that's that's normal i think when a market is um you know struggling kind of like it is and maybe turning around uh, things will pick back up but all of your help and support is very very kind and i do truly appreciate it let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up and things you might want to be paying attention to here in the market. You know, I've got some real major questions here on some of these tech stocks. Um, Apple has been rallying up here. And as you can see, Apple pushing up into this downtrend here. Now, if you saw that report just yesterday saying sales of um, mobile devices, uh, phones are um, at a 2013 low. Um, so 
as we move into this um, earnings uh, coming up here on 2.2 and Apple, I would be really, really careful about getting long here. Remember, Apple's had some major struggles here with China in their manufacturing due to, due to the lockdowns over there. And also, they're making a major move and moving a significant portion of their um, uh, manufacturing out of China to India so there's going to be some major costs with that kind of keep that in mind as you think about this heading into that earnings report this will be an important one and could be that bellwether for the market to make that determination we're going to continue to push higher or are we are going to swing back lower so watch that closely on Apple coming up just a real caution not really a trade to be had here but I think it's something to watch carefully you might want to take a look at this um, OKTA this thing just continues to tease us here um, in this nice little consolidating move here in the chart I think there is that opportunity if we can maintain the bullishness of the market that we push out of this resistance right here in OKTA and push on up and fill the gap here. So watch that closely. This has been a long, nice resting period here in the market. And if I take a trend right up through here, you can see we're, we may be reaching close to that area where we could fire up here on OKTA and move to the upside. So keep a close eye on that. Um, Amazon is another one I think we should keep an eye on. Now, Amazon. I don't know how they're going to perform. Um, I, I really think there's some issues out there that Amazon's dealing with on the consumer side of things. And we're running into some big resistance levels in the chart. And you want to note that both Amazon and Apple will be reporting on 2-2. This is going to be a big day, I think, for the market coming up. And maybe that decision point, whether we're going to continue higher or um, get that little bit of a swing lower. But as you can notice in here, we're running into some price resistance levels. At the same time, we have a very bullish pattern starting to show up here in the chart. And that's that break above that downtrend and we're holding some of these um, higher levels here in the chart. Be kind of careful here. This one really has that potential to go either direction and pretty hard when it goes. We know Amazon has that uh, ability to really move big. So um, next week, we're going to probably get some of those big reports that's going to define whether we're going to really push on higher here or if we push back. So it's another reason to be just a little bit cautious heading into next week um, here in the market. But this is a rounded bottom breakout pattern. I do think it continues to be worth watching and having on that list. Other tech stocks that I have been watching pretty closely, and I've made mention of this here just recently, and honestly, um, I hold a very small position in these stocks that I'm going to talk about, so I have a little bit of bias here, but the small position I'm holding is just the wait and see position. Keeps it on my radar um, in my account. So if you look right in here, AMD, we're pushing that major downtrend and pushing resistance in the chart. But there's been so many good reports out here, so many analysts saying, oh, this has got huge upside potential. I've been keeping a, a close eye on it. Remember, I'm not going to get super bullish on anything in the market until that major downtrend is broken and we prove to hold it as support. So I, I am holding a small position in here watching this chart to see if it can move higher. Um, this is going to report um, um, next week as well. So you'll want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, we've got some of these big reports that are going to make some decisions here in the market here on that tech side. So watch that one closely. And also NVIDIA, you know, after that um, really disappointing report in Intel um, yesterday, um, that does raise some questions for NVIDIA. Now watching NVIDIA, we're completely the opposite. We are all kinds of bullishness um, heading in toward um, some of these uh, big tech notes. It's got till the 22nd before it reports. But we have this very, very bullish inverted head and shoulders pattern here in NVIDIA showing lots of confidence to the upside, breaking that neck 
neckline here. Now I think in the short term we're very stretched out. It's pretty impossible for a stock to hold a trend that steep. So a rest or pullback in here looks possible. If that holds, then look for that next opportunity to the upside in NVIDIA. Um, other stocks that are doing um, kind of those things, Generac, you guys know I've been mentioning this. Generac, very, very strong bullish pattern showing up here in the chart. It's gonna report on the 15th, but watch that, that nice little rounded bottom breakout pattern holding in here nicely. There's a lot of good stocks in that area. Um, other places that you guys know that I've been hammering on here for some time now, and that would be the precious metals area and steel. Um, and GLD, very, very strong. Look at your um, gold sector mon monitor, uh, mi miners like Newmont Mining, Barrick Gold, um, KGC, uh, tons of, of gold miners are looking very good. Gold mining ETFs like GDX, JDXJ, are very, very good looking charts. So keep an eye on that. This continues to hold up strong. I do think it needs a rest against this resistance, but watch that carefully. If um, this continues to move, you wanna be part of that move. Um, SP, uh, uh, SLV, um, silver, also, whoops, um, also potentially setting up for more upside. This has ran uh, run into that resistance and it's resting here. So watch this consolidating mode here. If this continues um, to, to do that, look for that next push out here and the extension of that potential move. Boy, take a look at steel, um, US steel, beautiful chart here. Breaking through resistance, notice that we're moving up in the trend holding support levels, continuing to move higher in steel. And you can see that in lots of different places. And also take a look at some of these uranium plays. Um, CCJ really picking up here um, in the market. Watch that big push that we broke through this resistance. You guys have heard me talk about this one multiple times before watching that chart. Any rest or pullback in here that holds around that trend area would be something I would want to be paying attention to. So with that, guys, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I'm running this video along today because I didn't do a blog and I'm recording it early. Um, so I do sometimes put a little bit more detail into these videos on days like that. I want to wish you all a fantastic day and also a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be safe out there and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Wish you all the very best.